Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Susana Palma, exclusive ortho from Spain, and I'm going to show you a, a second case of expansion, asymmetric expansion of the upper arch in an adult patient. This is a 23 years old patient who was uh, coming to my practice with a unilateral posterior crossbite on her left side, as you can see in the photo, with a hypodiverging skeletal class 3 and, uh, and maxillary hypoplasia. When we analyze the facial, uh, facial analysis of the patient, we can see that the patient has a, a, a retrusive profile. She was presenting a deviation of the lower, uh, of the lower mandible, uh, of the mandible to the left. And he was presenting a very narrow arch with a wide buccal corridor on her left side. When we analyze the smile, we always like to check the midlines of the patient at the occlusal contact, at open mouth, and in central relationship. And the patient was maintaining the deviation of both midlines in centric occlusion and in maximal intercuspidation. So both midlines were totally deviated to the left, and the upper midline was tilted to the right. In the intraoral analysis, we can see that the patient has a perfect occlusion into, in class one on her right side and an unilateral posterior cross bite on her left side. The only uh, tooth that was not in posterior cross bite was the 28. In the radiograph, we see that the 28 has no antagonist, but even though that, we are going to maintain this tooth because we are going to use it as natural anchorage for our expansion movement. In the cephalometric analysis, we can see that the patient is presenting a class 3 with proclination of upper incisor. Our treatment goal consists in correcting the unilateral posterior cross bite using the right side as anchorage and using the 28 uh, also as anchorage for making the correction from 23 to 27. And which were our treatment goal? Well, in the upper arch, we are not going to plan to make a symmetric expansion. We have to expand more the, si the right side, uh, the side with posterior cross bite, this one. And we are not going to be asking the CAT designer just to correct the posterior cross bite, expanding at the same time from the canine to the seven. We are going to use the side uh, without cross bite in order to use as anchorage. And the, we are going to use this uh, horizontal attachment on the right side not bevel, in order to have this grabbing of the aligner during the correction of, on the posterior cross bite. We are going to ask for the expansion from three to six. And once that we have correct completely from three to six is when we are going to start moving the seven and the anchorage side. In the side of the posterior cross bite, we are going to use horizontal attachment, bevelet to gingiva in the premolar and bevelet to occlusal in the molar, because we are going to ask for labial root torque of the molar during the whole uh, expansion movement. We can see here how we are going to design a parabolic arch shape, symmetric inside size and torque at the end of the treatment. And so we are going to expand the left side of the patient uh, more than the right side. And we are going to use as limit the position of the 28. In the mandible, we are going to ask for an asymmetric compression on the lower arch in the left side. So we will need to make some more IPR in this side of the arch. Also remember that every time that we are expanding the upper arch, we are going to have a simultaneous retraction of the upper incisor, even though we don't see sometimes this effect in our clean check. So in order to prevent to have anterior interference at the end of the treatment that create a posterior open bite, we'll have to retrude this lower incisor during the treatment. 
we can see here how we make the corrections, the expansion. So check that we are asking for expansion, changing the torque, asking for labial root torque uh, during the expansion in the upper arch. And this is the evolution of the case. So we can see the initial at the end of the first set of aligners, as we were using this crisscross elastic, even though we use horizontal attachment in order to control the torque during the expansion, we have some premature contact in between the palatal cuspid of the upper molar and the lower, uh, and the lower molar. So we are going to ask for additional aligners with extra labial root torque of the molars and extrusion. And this is the final correction of our patient. the initial and the final expansion in the upper arch and in the lower arch. We can see the difference in the torque at the end of the treatment. So we need to overcorrect also the overjet in order to prevent premature contact at the end of the treatment. So you can see the overcorrection of the overjet. We can see also how we have expanded the upper arch and how we have improved this smile of our patients. So, and this is the final profile of the patient that we didn't spoil the upper, uh, the nasolabial angle at the end of the treatment, and we have increased the lower facial height of the patient. Thank you very much.